More like falling in love. That is Jason Gray here at Real Life Radio, 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine. Local Christian radio that your whole family can agree on. It is 8.07, The Vine Morning Show on a Thursday morning. I'm Mark, and usually at this time, Pastors Mac and Jacob are here in the studio with me. And first off, though, we want to welcome those watching our YouTube channel this morning and on cable TV channel 15, as we have a very special guest in the studio with us this morning as Mac and Jacob cannot be here. And uh, we're glad to have him in. His first time here on The Vine is Pastor Corey Musgrave from New Beginnings Church in Fairfield. Corey, good morning, and uh, it's good to see you, my friend. Yeah, it's good to be here. First time here on the radio with us. Yep, absolutely. Well, Mac and I, we've been talking, and and hopefully we can make this uh, include you in on our Thursday Thursday program. It would be nice for all of us to get together. But we're glad you're here as Mac couldn't be here and Jacob couldn't be here this morning. But... New Beginnings Church in Fairfield is just east of Fairfield on Route 15, and you've been going to that church for a long time. Gory, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, even uh, when I was about 15 years old, I started going out there. The church I was currently attending with my parents, they didn't have a youth group, and so I started going out there with Wes Hutchcraft, and I guess the rest is history, as they say. I preached my first message at age 17 there, and left for a while, and, and Felt like God called me back and uh, just installed as a new pastor there. So, Yeah, congratulations on that. And let's go back just a little bit. When you first preach, and I've talked to many preachers who first, when they first had their first sermon, and some have said, my sermon lasted maybe eight minutes, some maybe six minutes, some maybe ten. Where did you? <laughs> how, was, how did that affect you when your, your first time? How nervous were you? Uh, very nervous, very nervous. About... Um, it was under 20 minutes. I know that. It wasn't very long, but you feel like you're up there a couple hours. Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, but I I do remember it clearly, and uh, it was just an exciting experience, the whole thing leading up to preaching and, and what God has had for my wife and I since then, and just an exciting time to be alive. And you were, bo- or you were born and raised in Fairfield? Yes. Yeah. yeah, and your wife as well. Yes. Yeah, and tell us a little bit about your family. So, um... I've been married for 13 years, over 13 years, to uh, Jana Musgrave. We have three great kids. have a nine-year-old boy, Jeremiah, a seven-year-old boy, Evan, and a five-year-old girl that uh, is quite a character, uh, Kylie. And, uh, we have a great family. And your your boys like to you play baseball, right? Yeah, uh, they played baseball this summer for the first time in Little League. And how, how was that? Oh, they, they, had a, they had a great time. They really love outdoor stuff. Um, we're very an outdoor family. Sure. Our whole family. We like to hunt and fish and spend time outside. You know, it's good to, to get away, you know, from from the daily, uh, you know, being involved in the church. It gives you a chance to get away, Corey, and kind of think and kind of uh, think about things. And do you prepare a lot for your sermon when you're out like that, maybe hunting or fishing? Do you think about things like that? Oh, like, absolutely. Give you, it kind of gives you ideas and, hey, I can talk about this. Sunday, yeah. kind of tie it into your message. Right, absolutely. Being able to sit there in the quiet and the solitude yeah. of being outdoors. And, uh, you know, you look at the ministry of the early church and even Jesus, a lot of it was outside of the temple, outside yeah. of the synagogue, out meeting with people and interacting in different places or on the sea or wherever it was. And, and I think we need to get back to that as a, as a church of being out there. Yeah, I agree. You know, if, uh, and uh, we've said this many times on the air before, you know, if Jesus was to walk the face of the earth today, he wouldn't be in a church. He would be going door to door. He would right. be going and visiting with people. He wouldn't be in the church. And, and that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be out there, you know, spreading the word, spreading the word of Jesus and, and bringing the gospel to those that may you know, not know Jesus at this point. Absolutely. And there's such a spontaneity with that. It's so exciting and it makes life um makes life interesting that when you're at the gas station or when you're in the restaurant or when you're just going through your day at your job and you have one of those God moments where you meet somebody and you interact with them and you have the ability to pray for them Mm -hmm. and see God move in their life. And I mean, that's what the early church was like. And that's what it was like with Jesus. It was, he was from going this place to this place and had an interaction with a woman with issue of blood, or Mm -hmm. he was going from here to there and, and saw uh, a widow who had lost her son and seen him raised from the dead. And, 
And those are the moments that God wants to step in and really move. You know, and, and we were talking off uh, right before we went on the air, uh, before you became a pastor, you worked in a, in a, in a factory in the area. Mm-hmm. And that's a perfect time to minister to people that may be lost. And, and people come to you and, and, and uh, they look at you as a, a, as a mentor, as a, an accountability partner. Maybe they're going through something. And that's a perfect time to witness to people in, in situations like that. And I'm sure you did that when you were working in the factory, right? Right. You know, I, I kind of joke people, so now I'm a full-time pastor, quote-unquote, <laughs> but really if you're a Christian, we're all full-time ministers. Right. You don't clock in, you don't clock out. Um, when you're at your job, when you're going throughout your day, you know, God has something He wants He wants you to do. And, and in those places, you know, I was had the opportunity to pray with people and talk with people and witness to people and and uh, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah, it is exciting. And not only that, but, you know, it's a chance to make new friends. And, and, and they look up to you because they know that someone, if they're, if they're having an issue, they can come to you and you're going to be right there and you're going to be able to pray for them, you know, give them the direction they need in their life at that mm-hmm. point in time. Yes. Yeah, that's exciting. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, for anybody listening this morning, God wants that for you too. You don't have to have the title pastor for God to want to use you in your place of work. You know, I believe when the church steps up and everybody takes their part in the body of Christ, that's when we're going to see revival, and that's when we're going to see God do some incredible things. And so that type of stuff is not just for somebody who has a title of pastor. It's for every member of the body of Christ to be able to do that in their place of work. Amen. You know, and, and with the way things are now, that's what we need to be. We need to be the hands and feet of Jesus, no matter if it's at work, if it's at home, if it's out in the public. This is the time right now that we need to continue to be bringing people toward toward Christ and, and welcoming them into our church homes, right? Yes, yeah, and that is so critical. Like you just said, we're living in such a pivotal time in, in history right now. Um, such a, we, I, I think we've got a, a window, a brief window for the church to really rise up and, and be what God intended it to be. And uh, everybody has a part to play in that, a critical part. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're not in your role, you, there, there's a piece of the body that's missing. God has something he wants you to do. Wow. How long has it been since uh, you've been preaching for a long time, but you were called to New Beginnings Church and you were going there to the church and they put you in as the pastor? And what's uh, the church is, tell us about the size of the church. It's a growing church. And uh, what's the vision that you have for New Beginnings? Or what is the vision other than winning souls for Christ and, and bringing people in that may not have a church home? Is there anything further you want to see? Come yeah, up down absolutely. the road. I mean, we've yeah. already been talking about it. You know, I yeah. think God. Um, so, I preached my first message. I preached on a church without walls. Oh wow! And uh, my vision for the church is really to see the Spirit of God move all throughout the city of Fairfield and Wayne County. I would, I, lo- I would love to hear more of what God's doing outside of the church and what happens on Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. We have such a brief window on Sunday morning. Of, of an hour and a half, a couple hours that we're there. But think about the whole rest of the week that we have. And God wants to move during those times. And so the first message I was able to preach is um, the account in Matthew when Jesus passed away on the cross, when he died on the cross, and that veil was rent from top to bottom, and the Spirit of God just flooded out through Jerusalem, and it even caused the dead to be raised from the graves. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes... As people, we want to go back to what God kind of freed us from. We, we kind of want to put that presence back in a building and make it stay in a building and mm-hmm. stay in a Sunday morning service when God wants to be outside the walls. Mm-hmm. He wants to be moving in people's lives, and he wants to be seeing the dead raised. I'm not just talking about physically dead. I'm talking about spiritually dead people as well, that those we would look at and think, man, there's no hope for them, but, but God sees it differently, mm-hmm. and he wants to see their life change. So the real vision is is to see God move through the people that attend New Beginnings Church outside the walls and in their places of work, in their homes, mm-hmm. in the community. Amen, amen. With Pastor Corey Musgrave this morning here on the Vine Morning Show from New Beginnings Church in Fairfield. We're going to come back and visit more with Corey in just a little bit. Music and ministry that is always uplifting and encouraging. It's local Christian radio, 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine. That's brand new. That's Mercy Me's latest in their song called Dear Younger Me. It is 846 here at The Vine Morning Show on a Thursday morning. Again, we welcome those watching on our YouTube channel this morning. 
and on uh, cable TV channel 15 as we have Pastor Corey Musgrave with us from the New Beginnings Church in Fairfield. It's good to have Corey with us and uh, we're hoping that uh, he will be able to join Mac on uh, Thursdays as we've been talking about this and his first uh, appearance with us here on uh, the Vine uh, morning show on Thursday. What do you think of our spacious studio here, Corey? Oh, man, it's great. I, I told my wife before I come on, I said, I, I'm one of those guys that pulls up to a drive through and freezes and he gets ready to order. My wife says what she wants and kids, I hope I don't do this in front of the microphone and just get this deer in the headlights look. But sure. No, this is a great place. Yeah, well, you know, we uh, we think we have one of the, the, the biggest, we call it the biggest uh, studio we think in southern Illinois here, and uh, we had our birthday bash on uh, on uh, Saturday, this past Saturday, and we invited people to come up and uh, just talking to people outside. They said, "Wow, well, you know, wow, that was that was a big studio. You got a uh, spacious couch, a love seat, you know, for for guests to sit in." And I said, "Yeah, we're we're blessed. God has blessed us here in the ministry of the vine, and, and it's good to have you with us this morning." And and a pastor at New Beginnings Church in Fairfield, and a lot going on at the church. You got the men's conference and coming up in August. And uh, tell us a little bit about the other activities you have at New Beginnings. Okay, well, we uh, like a lot of churches, we have service on Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Starts at uh, Sunday school starts at 9 a.m. Uh, church service starts at 10. Um, kick going back in the fall. We usually have a Sunday night service extended time of worship and different people that have spoken in the past we've got so many, we're, this church is blessed with so many people that that can minister and mm-hmm. preach the word very very well and like to give opportunities for them to preach as well and we've got uh, some exciting youth groups on wednesday night we have both for senior and junior high we've got kids ministry on sunday and and, sun, and many sunday nights and uh, so a lot of a lot of exciting things happen and just in regular services. And, of course, what we talked about a little bit ago, we've got that men's conference coming up August the 20th. Yeah, we'll give you the details on that, uh, how how you can become, guys, you can become involved in that uh, youth conference, and we'll give you details on that. You know, something you mentioned, Corey, is very important to churches in, in today's day and age is our youth. Mm-hmm. And our church has a huge youth group, uh, House of Prayer. Your your church has a huge youth group, and it's very important because they're the future. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, I, that's one thing I think we just have to keep investing uh, in our in our youth, mm-hmm. junior high up, uh, high school age, because that is where the culture war is really being fought right oh now. Oh my, yeah. It's being fought over the minds and hearts of our of our young people, and we've got some incredible youth leaders at our church. Eddie and Artis Barbary take care of the senior high, and they do they do an amazing job. And we've got Randall and Susan Jolly that take care of the junior high, and uh, and then Brent and Angel McGuire take care of the children's ministry. But we've got some awesome people that that invest. Um, they go above and beyond to invest in the lives of the youth. And right now, our uh, senior high and junior high, they're at a youth camp in Carlinville, so they're spending some time being separated and and drawn close to God in that. And I've seen some pictures on Facebook. They're having an incredible time. Yeah, you know, and, and kids love camps like that. Yeah. It, it brings, as you mentioned, it brings them closer together to God. And, they, you know, they're they're kind of networking with new friends out there. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I remember in youth camp whenever I was young, and that was one thing I always enjoyed going to was not only to learn about God, but you get to meet so many people that you can continue to uh, – stay friends with and you know use them as an accountability partner as you're growing up in christ yes you know you can do that on a local level too but it's nice to have that outreach you know miles away as well right right camp has such an incredible role in my life Uh, i went to a a group that uh, some independent churches put together at the time orchardville was involved with it uh, victory outreach church and some a lot of other churches and that was a time in my life that, that I can go back. That, that's one of my Bethel moments, okay? Mm-hmm. I look back yep. and I say, I know for a fact that God is real, um, how God moved in services. And there are so many of us that left that place and were involved in ministry now because God impacted our lives in such a huge way from, the, from my age, about 12 on up. I remember services going into them at 6 o'clock. They didn't start till 7. We'd go in at 6 and pray. And we wouldn't come out of there till midnight. Mm-hmm. And it would seem like time just, you, you would look and you couldn't believe it was that late. 
But uh, God just moved in such a powerful way. And that's what I'm praying for for our youth this week in Carlinville. I'm praying they just get separated and have such an encounter with God that when they go back uh, to school this fall that they cannot, you know, it just has a marked difference on their life. Amen. I agree with that. And, you know, you being a young pastor, and there's a lot of young pastors out there today that, uh, that are now, you know, coming more and more into the pulpit. Corey, are you seeing that as you being young and in the pulpit now? You know, m- very many young pastors that's out there that stepped into the position like you're in now? Yeah, I think it's happening more and more, and uh, I think it has to happen. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're, you're seeing pastors leave the ministry and, and, and walk away at an alarming rate, and there has God has to raise some, some people up to, to step in that role. And uh, it's a humbling experience um, to, to be my age and step into that role of responsibility. But, uh, you know, my wife and I, we just want what God wants for us, and that's what we're walking towards. So I have a lot of uh, friends that are, that are young that are walking in that role, and, and mm-hmm. God's blessing and moving. And I, I think the key is just to stay humble. Sure, sure. It's very important, and it's, and it's good to have the supporting uh, role behind you, like, uh, like your wife, like mm-hmm. Jana, because it takes two of you to make this ministry possible. Right. You know, we talked about that even before we went, and this isn't a, this wasn't a, a thing that we prayed about. And, um, we, I mean, we did pray about it a lot, and, uh, and we just or that we just took lightly. We took it very seriously, and I know it affected not just us, but it affected our whole family, our mm-hmm. kids, and every everyone. So it's a whole family event uh, as we go forward together. Yeah, and uh, you know, certain you know pastors I've talked to before. There's certain scriptures that they have that just really has stayed with them for so long in their pastoral career is there one that really just stays with you that you really you really pray about you really read often more and more i i think um yeah and i think it speaks kind of towards the time that that we're living in Mm -hmm. um it says in hebrews chapter 12 verse uh let me get here You know, they. Yeah, I've talked to some. They, they they say you know they just continue to continually go back to this certain scripture because they can read it once, they can read it twice, they can read it twenty times, and still something jumps out at them that just really means a lot to them. Right. Uh, Hebrews twelve twenty six says, "When God spoke from Mount Sinai, His voice shook the earth, but now He makes another promise. Once again, I will shake not only the earth but the heavens also." This means that all of creation will be shaken and removed so that only unshakable things will remain. And that's something that's been on my heart for, for years. And I think we talked about this on the break a little bit, that there is a shaking that's happening in the earth. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's happening in our country. It's happening all around us. Stuff that people have uh, built their lives around and maybe has held as a security br- blanket is being pulled out from underneath them. Uh, but there are some things that are unshakable. There are some things that will remain despite what everything else goes on around us, and that is the Word of God and mm-hmm. our faith in Jesus Christ. Right. And uh, so being a pastor in this hour that we live in, that's a verse that I rely on because, one, it tells me not to get too comfortable with the things that we see that are tangible that are going to fade away because they're going to disappear at some point. Mm-hmm. But it also gives me security to know that when I put my faith in unshakable things, those things, they, they, they cannot be removed and they will stand the test of time. Yeah, it's stuff that will not be. The, the Word of God does never, will never change no matter how you look at it. It's right. the Word of God and it's, it's steadfast and true. Right. Yeah. But so much of the stuff around us is is mm. falling away. Mm-hmm. You know, on the financial system. Oh my, uh, No yeah. one knows uh, how that's working out, what's how to fix it, what's going to happen today, what's going to happen tomorrow. We see things happening across the world, like the Brexit with uh, Great Britain leaving yeah. the, the European Union and what are the implications of that and what will it be down the road. Uh, we see the interest rates that the Federal Reserve doesn't really know how to control and we just keep trying to draw, drive them lower and lower. Even talk of a negative interest rate, which mm-hmm. is crazy. So what I'm saying is all these things, are, are they're, they're, they're not a sure footing. Uh, our political system, I mean, we, we see what's happening with that. And you talk to people, and no one's really happy with, with, with any of it or mm-hmm. any, any candidate. And what I'm saying is there's not going to be a political solution to our problems. Those things are being shaken and shown that they, can, they are not a solid foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, but Jesus Christ is. And 
you know, maybe you're out there this morning and your life is kind of getting crazy. Your finances aren't lining up. Your, your hopes, your dreams, your job, your career is kind of uh, sifting away. We see a lot of that in our community. Mm -hmm. And my encouragement to you this morning is just to put your faith in something that cannot be shaken, that will remain. Um, throughout your life on this earth and on through eternity. You know, I don't know if you made it to uh, here a few weeks back. Franklin Graham was in Springfield. I don't know if you I, went up I there. I wanted to go so bad. I was on vacation. I yeah. was out of town. You know, uh, we went up there, and what an awesome day that was. And, you know, and, uh, and and Franklin was there, and it wasn't a political rally, and he made that, he made that statement. He says, we're here to pray for our country. Mm -hmm. Our country is in dire need of prayer. We're in trouble right mm -hmm. now. If we don't put God back into our country, we are not going to see the victory that we need to see right now at this point. God is the ultimate victor, and, and he is, you know, we, he, he holds the future. We know what he holds, but he says our country needs the prayer right now. We need to put our life back in to God because a lot of things, as you mentioned, we're not there. You know, right. it's not there right, right now. There's a lot going on. That has been taken out, prayer out of the schools, uh, just so many things. It's, you know, our country is in dire need right now for prayer. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, I've heard it said before that there will never be a political solution to a spiritual problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, all these things we've just mentioned, the, the money systems, the political things, those are just, those are symptoms, Mark. Those are, yeah. those are symptoms of a spiritual problem. And unless we get to the root of the issue, the spiritual issue, which is inside of man's heart, and we see Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit move in and, and fix that, we will not see a, a, a resolution to all these other problems that we're facing. It just it cannot happen. You cannot treat just the symptoms of a sickness and expect to be made well. You have right. to tr treat the root cause of it. Right. With Pastor Corey Musgrave this morning from New Beginnings Church in Fairfield, we're going to come back as uh, Mac and Jacob now with us today. And it's good to have Corey with us this morning here on the Vine Morning Show. We'll come back and visit more with Corey here on this Thursday. Over sin, over death, over all, over Music and ministry that is always uplifting and encouraging. It's local Christian radio, 105.5 and 90.9, the Vine Victorious. That is Third Day, their new song. It is 9.08, the Vine Morning Show on a Thursday morning. I'm Mark, along with Pastor Corey Musgrave from New Beginnings Church in Fairfield. And Corey, you're one of those that, you know, Laura is here with us on Mondays and she's a big prophecy buff. She loves prophecy. She studies prophecy, but you do yourself as well. You like to look at history and see what, where history compares on, from a Christian standpoint, where it compared many years ago to where it is today. And you believe, and we were talking about this off the air, that uh, we're under a great shaking going on right now, right? Yeah, I think we're seeing the beginnings of it. Um, I'd like to read a couple more scriptures here in Haggai chapter 2, starting in verse 6. It says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place... I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that we're seeing the beginnings of, of things that are shaking, and it's already affecting people's lives. You, yeah, you, you know, you, you say, I will shake heaven and earth. You believe that could be what's going on right now, earthquakes, floods, fires, all that is yes, what he's talking I, about there. I think there. it could yeah. be the natural things mm -hmm. as well as the stuff that people put their trust in. Sure. Um, you know, like we, we talked about the financial, we've talked about the political, we've talked about all these security blankets that people put their trust in, and those things are going to be shaken away. Mm. They're going to be seen for what they are, and, and people cannot put their hope and trust in it. But the great thing is, is that we don't have to be afraid in that time. You know, we right. talked off the air, too, that somebody asked you the other day, oh, well, aren't you afraid with everything's happening? Mm -hmm. Your response was, 
No, no. no. Yeah, I had someone. I'll, I'll, yeah, I had someone ask me the other day with everything going on. Am I afraid of what's to come? I said, No, I'm not afraid. I said, You know, God's in control. He already knows what what the answer and what the result's going to be. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and Pastor Mac, we were talking about this last night. He had some missionaries in from uh, Pakistan, from Lahore, Pakistan, and this this man of God that came in with with Pastor Mac puts his life on the line every single day as he goes out and ministers. I mean, he, he's dealing with life and death and. Pastor Max said that somebody asked him, the, the missionary, aren't you afraid to die? And he just laughed. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not afraid to die. That would be glorious to give my life for the Lord. Sure. So even though these things are being shaken around us, we do not have to be afraid. We don't have to walk in fear. We don't have to think that uh, or be so concerned about what's going on or what's going to happen to us. I love the verse in, in uh, Timothy 1.7. It says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. I love this passage here in Haggai because it says, in the midst of all this shaking, the glory of the latter temple shall, shall be greater than the former. Mm -hmm. And I think the glory that God's about to pour out upon his church, I mean, the people, again, the church is made up of people that, that are loving God. It's not just a building, but the glory God's going to pour out upon his church is going to be greater than the former. I think the move of God we're going to see in this country is going to be greater than the former moves of God. I think the things God wants you to use you to do in your life will be greater than what even the apostles walked in and what they saw. But it's going to take trusting the Lord despite everything that's shaking around us. Yeah, you know, there, there, there's just so much going on. And, and as we mentioned, you know, people are afraid. But, yeah, don't be afraid. But... Yeah, we believe that great shaking is here, and, and so many things are going on that people are living in a dark world too, Corey, and we were talking about that off the air. There's just so many things that are that are dark out there that, that may not be of, well, knowledge to those that are participating in it, you know, so, so many things out there that are going on that kind of, you know, leaves people like thinking it's all right, and this is what they're supposed to be doing, but there's a lot of things out there that... We're not supposed to be. Sure, and, and, and that's part of it as well. And mm -hmm. I think those things are going to be revealed for what they are. Uh, Matthew 24 mentions a word more and there more than in any other place in the Bible, and that word is deception. Mm. Uh, that's what Jesus, I was looking for a while ago. When Jesus is, is talking about the end, Matthew 24, he goes over and over, take heed that you not be deceived. Be careful, he says, and he says, even if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. And so there is rampant deception. And one of the things I've been praying for is, God, let people be confronted with your truth. Lord, don't let them go to hell because they, they were just deceived and didn't know, but let them make a conscious decision. And uh, some of you out there, even this morning, you know, you're going to be confronted with things. Things are going to be shaken in your life, and you're going to be confronted with truth and reality. And your decision in whether or not to walk in truth and follow truth will, will, will play a role not only in this life, but in eternity for you. And so I just encourage you to walk in truth and uh, um, not be deceived. Uh, can we just pray for people right now? Yeah, to, absolutely. To do that? I Father, think we should. Yeah. Father, we just thank you this morning for everyone that's listening on, on the vine. And God, I pray for those out there, Lord, that are walking in places and things, Lord, that, that you don't have for them. And Lord, I pray that they would just be confronted with your truth this morning. And God, that they would walk in it. And Lord, the things that you have prepared for their life will be greater even than the former things. Lord, we're trusting you for that. And God, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would reveal it to him in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good stuff with Pastor Corey this morning. And, you know, to in a verse that, that I was thinking about last night, watching everything going on in, in, uh, in today's world, it was out of uh, Matthew. And it was, uh, I'm trying to find it here where it was at. Here we go. Matthew 24, verses 4. Where you know where Jesus answered and said to them, "Take heed that no one deceives you." And you just mentioned that just a moment ago. And for many things will come in my name, and many will be deceived. And you mentioned that, and and also about the uh, here wars and rumors of wars. And there's so many things that are going on, Corey, in our world today that these things have to happen. Uh, but the end is not not yet. Right, right. And we're we're walking in that mm. right now. We're right. in that time. I mean. 
Um, so with the South China Sea, I know some talking about current events, things that are shaking, there's been such a controversy there between the Philippines and China. An international council just come out and said China's overstepped its bounds. And uh, while it has no legal authority to do anything to China, China's saying, you know, this is a move towards war. So we hear war there, we hear war in the Middle East, uh, we hear of trouble everywhere. But there is one foundation you can build your life on that cannot be shaken, and that is Jesus Christ. And all these things happening around us, Mark, they're just a fulfilling of what Jesus said would happen in, in Matthew 24. But I believe it's five times in that, five or six times in that chapter, it repeats over and over and over again to not be deceived. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you or I cannot be deceived is if we stay in the Word of God because it is the one sure, true foundation that, that will uh, let us walk in, in truth and, and, and help freer and cleanse our minds of, of everything else that's going on around us. Amen. With Pastor Corey this morning here on the Vine Morning Show, we're going to come back and talk more with Corey Musgrave from New Beginnings Church in Fairfield. It's good to have him in the studio with us this morning. And more to come here on the Vine Morning Show. A new home. Mark's office is located at 2019 Broadway in Mount Vernon, and his phone number is 214-4317. And we welcome you back to the Vine Morning Show on a Thursday morning. I'm Mark, along with Pastor Corey Musgrave from New Beginnings Church in Fairfield. Good morning, Corey. How are you this morning? Oh, we're doing great. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's good to have you here. You know, we're just talking about a, a number of things today. And, you know, as Christians, not only can we share the gospel inside the church, but uh, we're to go out and share the gospel outside the church. You know, but something disturbing, and we were talking about this off the air, and it's not happening in our country, Corey, but it's happening over in Russia. They have now have approved a law making it illegal to share the gospel outside of Russian churches. And you made a comment a while ago that Russia is an established country over there. How long is it going to be before this catches on here in the United States? Are we at that point? What do you think about that? Um, I, I don't know how far it'll be or how, how long it'll be, but you know, we, we see the changes that are happening, the lawsuits that are affecting churches at the moment in our country. Uh, you see there's a court case even in, in Iowa that mm. involves uh, a speech that is, says basically open to the public cannot be offensive to to others of, of what they call transgender and so how long it'll be I do not know but it almost seems like the, the writing is on the wall of this uh, push to squelch the testimony of Jesus Christ but that's something that we again we we cannot be afraid of but we have to walk in faith we have to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit and uh, do what God has called us to do at the moment and take advantage of the opportunity we have right now and the freedom that we have in order to tell people about the gospel. Yeah, you know, when you stop and you think about this, oh, it's okay, that's happening over there in Russia. But, you know, as you mentioned, there's already lawsuits out there and everything. And, and that's our job as Christians is to get outside the walls of the church and not be limited, but to spread the word as much as possible so it doesn't come to that point. Right, right. And... That's what I, we were talking about. I, I think if, if we are not, as, as a church, and when I say as a church, I mean the body of Christ. As God looks down here in Wayne County in southern Illinois, he doesn't just see a, a New Beginnings Church as, as his church. He sees everyone in Wayne County that, that is born again, that, that lives by the name of Christ. And if, and if the church, meaning that, does not get outside the walls of a building, and do the work that God has called us to do, to be the hands and feet, the body of Jesus Christ. If we do not get outside the building and do that, I believe we're going to be forced to at some point. Uh, we were talking just, just the early church when Jesus ascended up into heaven, what did he tell the disciples? He said, go into all the world. He said, go and, and be my witnesses in Jerusalem, which was ground zero, Judea and Samaria, which was a little bit further out. And then he said to the ends of the earth, but what did the disciples do in, in the church? They just basically camped out in Jerusalem for a while. It was comfortable there. It was where everything was. And they didn't really spread out at the very beginning. And so what took place? Then persecution came, and they were forced to leave Jerusalem. And I believe if the church today, meaning if you're listening to this and you're a member of the body of Christ, if you're not living that life outside of the building, you're going to be forced outside of it eventually. Um, and... And because God wants us to be the body of Christ, not just only on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock, but he wants us to be the body 
every day of the week. You know, that's why we need revival more and more uh, uh, now than ever, Corey. This is a perfect time to open up and bring those in. And, you know, what would be the first thing that to, to establish a, a revival here, we have to draw people in. And the way to do that is to get them to come into your door of the church by sharing the gospel with them more right. and more. Right. You know, and if you're listening this morning, God wants to use you. If you're dependent upon your pastor just to do it all and invite everybody and to, and to be out there and minister to everyone, he's only one person and he cannot do that. God wants to use you to affect the lives of the people around you. And what that takes, it takes being filled with the Holy Spirit. It takes walking in faith. And when God opens a door, it takes you opening your mouth and letting God speak through you to minister to that person. Um, we see that happen in Acts chapter 4. They had just been filled in Acts 2. But Acts 4, they come back and they say, God, this job is bigger than us. I'm paraphrasing here. I encourage you to go open your Bibles and read it in Acts 4. They go to a prayer meeting and they say, God, this job that you've called us to is bigger. It, it's beyond us. And they prayed and they prayed, God, fill us with the Holy Spirit again and let us be your witnesses and stretch out your hand to heal through us outside just the walls of the synagogue. And that's what happened. And uh, first place it's got to start, Mark, it's got to start in the prayer meeting because the job God has called you and I to is bigger than what we can do. And if we're not on our face and knees in prayer, asking God to fill us and use us, then we're starting off on the, on the wrong foot. And uh, if I can just put a plug in for New Beginnings oh, and one of the pastors there as well, uh, we have a prayer pastor, Pastor Robert Coker, and he is one of the most committed people to praying that, that I know and uh, leads prayer service on Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. at New Beginnings. And uh, we believe that, that revival is coming and God is going to use His church outside the walls again, but we believe it has to start in prayer. And uh, we're committed to seeking that. With Pastor Corey this morning here on the Vine Morning Show, as uh, Max not able to be with us today. And it's great to have you here this morning. And, and uh, tell us a little bit about you have uh, uh, the men's conference coming up in August. And uh, that's going to be, I believe, on a Saturday, right? Yes, Saturday from 9 to 3. And uh, we believe if you're, if you're a man, God has called you to be the priest and leader of your home. And this hour, that we're, this day that we're living in, it's so critical that you take that role seriously and that you lead and guide your home in a biblical fashion. And we just want this conference to get together to uh, revitalize, encourage, um, bring back together because we need strong men of God in this country today. Iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens yeah. iron. And we need you to be the man of God in your home. We need you to be the man of God in your workplace and civic life. And uh, men have kind of taken a back seat sometimes, it seems. Uh, but you need to stand up at the forefront again and, uh, and be the leader that God has called you to be. And so we just, uh, this is open to everybody. This is open to uh, um, any, any man that, that wants to come and be a part of it. And uh, we're going to have lunch together. We're going to have some time of worship. And, we've, again, we've got some awesome speakers coming in. Uh, Pastor Roger Willis, Pastor Heath Beer, and Pastor Chad Everett that are going to come in just encourage, challenge, and speak into your life. And that's going to be, uh, do you have the, the date again is on Saturday? Saturday, August the 20th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. The cost is $10. Uh, Matt, we're gonna, uh, that includes your lunch. lunch wow. uh, Matt Kinney is going to be pr cooking the food, and uh, you know I've been trying to watch what I eat, but I might <laughs> yeah. I might have to go off that plan. Sure, on one, day. The 20th. one day, one day, yeah, one day. Now, how can people register, uh, Corey, if uh, they're interested? Uh, do they contact the church? Yeah, you can contact the church. Uh, you can see me out in the community. Um, you can. Uh, uh, get with us, and we'll get you get you a ticket. Jeff Jake's also heading that up. So, yeah, get a hold of Corey or call the church. What's the church's number they can call you at? Uh, you know, I don't, don't have that one don't memorized. Have. I will have to. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll get it before we get off yeah, here. We'll get it here. before yeah. we get off. Yeah, that's one thing that you have to remember is yeah. the, the church's number. Yeah, but yeah, you can get a hold of Corey or just stop in. Can you stop in the office? Yep. And if you're in the area, you can just stop in the office and register. Right. Yeah. The number is uh, 618-842-3683. Uh, we also have a uh, Facebook event set up, the Men of War Conference, that you can get some information from. And you can actually pay for, we have a link on there, you can actually just pay and sign up 
through on, PayPal, I believe. Yes, through PayPal on that Facebook event. You can just sign up and register through it. And uh, if you're a pastor out there, you're listening, we'd love for you to invite the men of your church and uh, just come be a part of it. Because we want, our heart is to see, again, men in the church, not just our church, not just our group, but, but men come together and for the body of Christ. You know, I've been, and you've been too, we've been to many of these men, Iron Sharpens Iron conferences before. And you do, you go and you come back a changed person. Mm-hmm. You learn so much and they cover so much. And, you know, what is awesome, I went to one one year, Corey, and I believe it was in Indianapolis. And it was in uh, Banker's Life Fieldhouse there. And I don't know if you've ever been there or not, but no. uh, they did an altar call for the men. And to see the men that were coming down from the from the uh, upper deck down onto the floor, it took like 30 minutes just to get everybody down. Wow. But what a moving, what a moving experience that is to see men get together and bond together in fellowship for Christ. Yes, it's so meaningful. Absolutely. And what I, what we're talking about, we're talking about this shaking that's happening, that's starting to happen around us. That is uh, that is happening in our world, and and if you're a man out there, we're going to need each other, and That's we're right. going to be standing shoulder to shoulder. And it's not going to matter if if you go to the House of Prayer, or you go to New Beginnings, or you go to the First Baptist, or First Christian, or wherever church it is you go to. We're going to be standing shoulder to shoulder for the cause of Christ, uh, because we agree on on the fundamentals mm-hmm. and uh, that that's our heart in this we've got to stand together amen with pastor Corey this morning here on the vine morning show we'll come back here in just a few moments Roth near this has been keeping watch with laura greathouse heard twice daily on 105.5 and 90.9 the vine thank you laura well as we get ready to wrap things up and uh, Corey, I, I tell mac every thursday uh, when you're having fun like we've enjoyed the company today and just sharing different stories but it goes by in a hurry here oh my goodness you found that out didn't you flown by yeah well it's great to have you here this morning but there's some scripture you want to share with us this morning and it's out of uh the book of john chapter nine you want to share before we leave yeah just the the last few things we've been talking a lot of stuff that's happening in our world um john nine four and this is jesus talking he says i must work the works of him who sent me while it is day the night is coming when no one can work. And if you're listening this morning or you listen later or watch the YouTube channel, I, I just want to encourage you to do what God has called you to do today and do not procrastinate and do not put it off. Because if you do, you will look back uh, down the road and say, man, I wish I would have done this when it is easier. I remember this last year I was uh, got a wood stove for the first time and I had neglected to prepare the wood for the winter. Oh, no. And so it got cold out, and there I was out in, the, out in the freezing cold trying to get wood ready. And I thought to myself, man, I wish I would have prepared when it was summertime and when it was easier. And uh, the church needs to be the church now Amen. while it is day. And God has something for you to do, and don't put it off until tomorrow. Speak to that coworker today minister to that person you come in contact throughout your travels don't put it off god has something he wants you to do today amen with pastor Corey musgrave this morning from new beginnings church in uh, fairfield and Corey, tell us service times when you meet on wednesdays and and uh, on sunday okay so uh new beginnings uh, church out there east of town is uh sunday school starts at 9 a.m morning worship starts at uh 10 a.m uh, Wednesday night youth starts at, uh, they, they kind of get together at 6 and stir- service starts at uh, 6.30 p.m. Yeah, New Beginnings Church just uh, right right off uh, Route 15, just east of Fair- Fair- Fairfield, just past the Maple Hill Cemetery. On your right, you can't miss it, can you? Can't miss it. And I don't want to neglect to mention prayer meeting Tuesday at, uh, at 7 p.m. Everybody would be welcome to come to that as well. Amen. Thanks for coming in. It's great to have you. Uh, it's been great. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome to come back with Mac anytime on Thursdays. Yeah, we'd love to have you back. Yeah, yeah. it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for coming in. Good to see you, my friend. Good to All see right. you. All right. Pastor Corey Musgrave from New Beginnings Church in Fairfield with us this morning here on the Vine Morning Show.